Hello, so I wanted to do another video recommending various types of defensive equipment that you can buy in the UK which might be a good idea with the state certain things are going or just as a peace of mind of owning. So I'm going to go over a few things and then I'm going to explain sort of why they're good. So let's start off with the one I recommend quite a lot, it's a stab vest or a Kevlar vest, a front and back Kevlar vest, these are the ex-police ones because you can buy them much cheaper than buying a new one. Uh, obviously the downside is you're buying second hand Kevlar which you have to decide for yourself if that's a risk you want to take. For the majority of people I'd say yes that is a risk you want to take simply because these are often 10% of the price of a new vest. Um, these police front and back Kevlar vests are very good quality. Uh, they've got the stab protection chain mail on both sides of the Kevlar panels and they generally cost about 30 to 40 pounds, um, maybe going up to 50 pounds for some models. Whereas if you were to buy brand new Kevlar vests, they're normally well over £300. So for a lot of people, I think it's the option between one of these and not being able to afford one of the vests. So I would simply recommend getting one of these. Um, obviously Kevlar does deteriorate over time, but from what all the reading I've done, that seems to be very exaggerated. As in, basically what happens if Kevlar is um, refurbished is you send the Kevlar panels off to a company, they check what the Kevlar looks like, if it looks a bit dodgy they just replace it for you, if it looks alright they extend the date on it. So again, they're not actually really um, refurbishing the Kevlar as such, all they're doing is just thumbing it up or thumbing it down and sending it you back or sending you a replacement model. So, as I said, these Kevlar vests are fairly cheap for what they are, the ex-police ones, they are, as I said, about... Um, you know, 30 to 50 pounds depending on your model. Most of them are level 2 with stab protection like this one is. Um, however, you can also get level 3 vests with stab protection. If you spot a level 3 vest with stab protection, you might want to get that. Simply for the reason it will protect you from more types of projectiles um, as well. And assuming that if it has the same stab protection on it, it will give you a bit more stab protection because a slightly thicker bit of Kevlar is obviously going to make it harder for a knife to go all the way through. So these are obviously stab protective because they have a chainmail layer or something similar on the front of all the Kevlar panels, sometimes like a thin layer of polycarbonate, sometimes some other kind of mesh. Um, the point is the Kevlar, although it's kind of stab resistant, isn't because people often say, well, Kevlar vests can't be stab resistant um, because of how Kevlar works. Yes, if you've got a really sharp knife, you can cut through Kevlar, but you can't really cut through Kevlar when there's chainmail in front of it and the chainmail has already done a good job stopping the blade or slowing it down, then the Kevlar is going to manage the rest. So, Kevlar vests um, should be self obvious why I'm recommending that. Now, ballistic helmets or riot helmets, um, and I'll cover the difference. So, ballistic helmets are helmets that protect you from bullets as well as shrapnel and everything else. This is the um, old, sort of, well, they still use these, the British Arm Police one, which is similar to the Pascot. Okay, so that was a bit irritating. My camera battery ran down, so I'll try and remember what I was saying. But um, this is a Kevlar 3A helmet, the Arm Police type one, very similar to the US Pascot. Now, you may or may not be able to see on the layer you've all there that it actually says 3A. So, 3A Kevlar being kind of the best level of Kevlar you can have before you start getting into plate carriers and other such things. So 3A basically means that it will protect you from um, most pistol rounds, and that's about it. As well as anything that's a lesser threat, so shrapnel and things like that. Now, these helmets are fairly comfortable. Um, I'm getting more used to the liner in this one now. Um, but yeah, ballistic helmets are very good, obviously, protection for being shot at by minor threats. So they are not going to protect you from a rifle round. Unless you are very lucky and the rifle bullet hits it and either sort of has a glancing hit and um, ricochets off. Or sometimes I've seen videos where people shoot these, the rifle bullet goes in, but it kind of goes around the helmet like that on the inside. So it might exit or might get stuck, but it actually goes up and around if you got shot there or something. Um, rather than just going straight through, but obviously if it goes straight through you're a goner. Because um, these helmets are designed to protect you from, um, as I said, shrapnel and pistol rounds, not actually full on rifle rounds. As I said before, it's not really until you get into the Soviet titanium style helmets and the... Um, the Swiss titanium helmets that you have any chance of a helmet stopping a rifle round. But these are fairly lightweight and comfortable and kind of the best thing you can get. So, not to keep going into it, but the US had the Pascot helmet which was amazing in the 80s. Um, and then most other people or nations copied the Pascot. This is kind of a Pascot copy, it's not exactly the same but it's close enough and it's rated 3A so it offer very similar levels of protection. The US have since upgraded away from the Pascot with I think first a lightweight combat helmet which was a lighter version of the Pascot basically, offered the same protection. 
and then they have now the enhanced combat helmet which is where they're using thermoplastics rather than Kevlar which is quite interesting so the idea is again it's lighter and stronger than Kevlar um, offers something like 40% better protection it's quite an improvement um, despite it being a lighter helmet so that's great you know hopefully more nations will start using um, thermoplastics in armor because that could definitely bring the price down of making really good equipment so there you go that's a ballistic helmet as said um, you know offer a very good level of protection probably would protect you a fair bit from blunt force trauma as well and would stop some crossbow bolts but I imagine not all of them but you know these are very good helmets for um, protection in that regard but the other kind of helmet that I'd recommend a bit more uh, in some cases for the UK would be a riot helmet now this is the cash carrier variant the difference between these and the regular riot helmets are the um, the cash carrier versions don't have a strong advisor sort of top section it's not a massive deal but if you see two for the same price get the actual X riot police ones because they have a reinforced visor section at the top other than that they're identical as far as I can tell so these are kind of hard to put on you have to put them behind your head pull them forwards you've then got your chin strap now you'll notice that this suit uh, sits quite loosely on my head and there's a reason for that let's get it on there you go. The reason you sit loosely on your head is, um, again, a blunt force trauma thing. It means if the helmet is hit, it moves a bit on your head. Uh, so therefore, some of the shock of the impact goes into moving the helmet and not transferring straight through into your head. So you want these to not, you know, sit completely tight on your head. That's by design. Uh, most of these come with a Velcro bit. I've taken it off of mine that protects your top of your neck. I found that, you know, caused problems with a lot of body armors if you had it on with the armor. They'd kind of rub against each other or one would force the other into a weird position so I personally prefer this without the neck protection at the back but it's down to you so the visor on these is polycarbonate and as you can probably see there's some air rifle impacts and pistol crossbow impacts where I tested that on there so the visor will definitely protect you from lots of impacts like that as well as you know blunt force trauma and things like that uh, blades and things as well obviously it is not bulletproof it might stop birdshot because I have seen some videos where people test these and riot shields and birdshot and it seems to stop birdshot but not buckshot so it might give you minor protection I said air rifle pellets and things will be stopped by this but you know that's not its designed purpose the design purpose is to prevent impacts and fluids being thrown into your face now the visor is polycarbonate but as far as I understand the actual main bit of the helmet is um, I think compression molded fiberglass it's some sort of carbon fiber fiberglass type thing now you'll be able to see on here I've also um, put some shots into it various things um, let's see if I can find you a good impact hole there's a good impact hole um, so that's probably I think a pistol crossbow thing where it went in a little bit and stopped uh, none of these have got anywhere close to penetrating a full helmet but bear in mind these are not ballistic helmets Unlike the Kevlar one, this would not do nothing to stop a bullet as far as I'm aware. They advertise these as having no ballistic protection. The purpose of these, as stated, is completely physical protection, mostly from bats and um, bricks and things like that. So, both the helmets actually would give you physical protection. I'd say this would give you better physical protection, specifically because it has a visor on it. Um, whereas the other one obviously gives you much better protection from firearms and things like that. So, but either way, I don't think you'd do wrong with it. You'd have to think what you're more likely to encounter or what you can afford. Um, right helmets are generally £30 or so on eBay for good condition second-hand ones. The armed police helmets at the moment are about £35 plus a bit of postage, working out £41, £42 in total. So for a Kevlar 3A helmet, that's a really good price. You've also got the option of buying old military helmets if you wanted those. Um, for example... I wouldn't recommend a British Mark VI helmet because they're awful, um, but if there's a helmet you're interested in, look in them videos from America where Americans shoot the helmets, they buy them and shoot them, um, and you'll actually get a good idea of what it might be able to or might not be able to protect you from. Uh, but in general, you, you could do a lot worse than a steel pot military helmet, like the American M1 helmets, um, the Soviet M40 helmets and their later helmets, um, East German M56 helmets. Most of those will stop pistol rounds at fairly close range. Not always consistently, but you know you have a much better survival chance of all those helmets on than with it off. Um, and obviously, again, things like bricks and br uh, blunt force trauma, they are going to negate some of that, if not all of it. So you could do a lot worse than a lot of those helmets. But the British Mark VI helmet I would definitely avoid, because every video I've seen of that, it fails miserably at everything. Um, about as useful as um, wet toilet paper. 
but the uh, Mark 7 helmet is a lot better but annoyingly there's not many test videos of Mark 7 helmets so it's hard to get a good idea of you know how good it is. Tumbo said to me you know not to really use it um, especially if you've got proper Kevlar helmets because it's you know to cheapen them apparently they didn't make them fully out of Kevlar it's a mix of Kevlar and ballistic nylon so you could do a lot worse but you could do a lot better I think is the point. Uh, I still quite like my Mark 7 helmet but uh, just to show you it, it's got all the covers on and everything, but yeah, the Mark 7 helmets, apparently they're popular in the Ukraine at the moment, in the Ukraine Civil War, but, you know, your mileage may vary with it, because um, it's not a full Kevlar helmet like it really ought to be, because, um, you know, they don't want to spend much on British soldiers, um, you know, give them something that's a composite helmet, it's good enough in the eyes of the government. Um, and the other thing I'd recommend, as always, is a gas mask or a respirator, filter models get a mask and some spare filters for it simply because of the risk of um, being exposed to something like CS gas, um, chemical fires, things like that, or maybe a terrorist attack involving a dirty bomb or um, you know chemical weapons. I'm kind of surprised terrorists haven't tried to do this more yet because it would be very effective but thankfully they're stupid for the most part. Um, but yeah, you'll want to get a gas mask and everything else just simply so um, you know, you've got protection. So, to sum it up, you want your stab vest, um, you know, and Kevlar vest to protect you from some pistol rounds and sort of knives and things like that. You want to have a helmet, either a right helmet or a ballistic helmet to give you head protection from physical blows and potentially being shot at. And then a respirator to protect you from um, chemical weapons, CS gas, things like that that could be used in urban conflicts. So hopefully that's useful, it gives you some idea. I'm not saying carry these on you at all times, but I'm saying they're things that are worth having in your house in case something goes wrong. So this has been a purely defensive video. I've not covered any weapons in this, because I think I have done ones where I've covered improvised sort of home defense weapons before. What I didn't show in this video, which I also have, which I kind of recommend if you see one for a good price, is um, a riot shield. Um, especially the rounder, smaller ones, because for individual use you want more of a smaller, lightweight riot shield, not the big tower ones, but for formation tower shields are obviously better. But the reason being simply that um, a riot shield, again, is kind of like the riot helmet's visor, but the entire shield. Um, you know, it'll stop air rifle pellets, pistol crossbow bolts, maybe bird shot, um, you know, lots of other blunt projectiles, bricks, molotov, stuff like that. So the a uh, handheld shield, especially little small ones, would be quite good for, you know, blocking while you strike with something else, combined with the rest of your other armour. Anyway, there you go, hopefully that video has been interesting, but this is an idea of some of the defensive stuff you can still currently buy in the UK, that I definitely recommend for um, self-defence or personal protection use.